Welcome back to The Breakfast. We move now straight into uh, the segment where we share with you some major events that happened today in history. We're going back to 1983 first. And this is a very, very interesting one because, of course, who uh, the person who currently holds the seat of president of uh, uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, today, 1983, was the day that the military coup that ousted uh, Shehu Shagari happened, December 31st, and, of course, uh, brought in Major General Muhammad Buhari as head of state. It, it came, of course, with, um, you know, the, the, the fallout of some issues between the civilian and military um, leadership of the country at that time. There were issues, you know, about the, the type, style of leadership that the country was dealing with. As always, uh, the civilian leadership was accused of, you know, corruption and, you know, leading the country down the bottomless pit. You know, there's people who would argue that, you know, after the coup, it still didn't, you know, heal or fix anything with regards to corruption or making the country better. And they will also say war against the discipline <laughs> exactly. is on the premise on which he rode to, you know, so his it, current it, uh, position. It feels like copy and paste, 83, copy and paste, you know, to uh, 20, 15. Um, but anyway, so it happened in 1983, and uh, the you know government of uh, Major General uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari uh, took over then. Um, and like I said, it started really uh, you know between tension between the civilian and military aspects of the Nigerian government. One major incident, according to the history books, was when General Muhammad Buhari, the commanding officer back then of the Third Division, cut off fuel and food supplies into neighboring Chad. An, an action, of course, that was uh, not very you know, pleasant to uh, President Shehu Shagari back then. It eventually led to issues between the both of them. And then there was, uh, of course, a coup in 83 on this day. One thing that I will quickly mention is some of the p major players in that coup uh, that took place. According to the history books and, of course, uh, what you can find online, one of them, and I want you to listen to these names very carefully, was Moshud Kashimawa Biola. Um, according to the story, he was a business tycoon who fi um, financed the coup plot, um, according to General Babangida. Another person was, of course, Major General Ibrahim Babangida, who eventually uh, had his own coup in 1985 and took over from General Muhammad Buhari. Um, Brigadier General Ibrahim Bako, the brigade commander. Uh, Brigadier Sani Abacha, who eventually, of course, took, came into play. So this is, is interesting because these names eventually still came into history as major players in Nigeria's um, political um, story. It's, it's also um, uh, fair to note that this was the fifth coup yes, since it was. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, we got a democracy and it wasn't it wasn't uh, funny for a lot of persons. Um, another thing like um, we cited earlier, the war against indiscipline. In his New Year's speech um, yeah. after the coup, uh, he talked about the general moral decay in the society and said he was going to come out to ensure that we go back to being a disciplined uh, society. So a lot of the conversation when he came back, all the times that he came back to become a civilian government um, president, was on that um, um, war against indiscipline. And I would like to take a look at some of the things uh, that that uh, decree uh, that um, uh, move had. It was launched on March 20, 1984. Uh, it says it's trying to address perceived public. Uh, immorality and civic responsibility. Um, one of the, some of the things that came up from that, any student over the age of 17 uh, caught cheating on an exam would get 21 uh, years in prison. Uh, countering an arson um, will be investigated and if you are found guilty, there is the death penalty for you. Um, there is also another decree uh, three degrees, actually, um, the freezing, the banking freezing of accounts decree of 1984 um, allotted to the federal ministry, uh, military government, the power to freeze bank accounts of persons suspected to have committed fraud. Another one was the recovery of public property special military tribunal decree. It's permitted the government to investigate assets of public uh, individuals. So it goes on. The exchange control anti-sabotage uh, decree stated penalties for violators of foreign exchange. 
uh, decree 20 on illegal ship bunk. They just went on and a, on and there. on. As at that time, uh, Nigeria's first Nobel laureate, Wale Shoinka, uh, wrote a piece in 2007 um, where he outlined the crimes of Buhari. Now, I would also want to mention that ahead of the 2015 um, election, general election, Buhari responded to his human rights because there was a lot of allegation of human rights violation during his military uh, regime. And the criticism, his response to it was that if he was re-elected, um, he will respect the fundamental human rights of all Nigerians. He promised that in 2015. But the question, the big question in 2020, as we, this is the last day, so I'll make sure I remembered, <laughs> this is the last day of the year 2020. How well has he kept that, that promise, promise from all that has happened in this country? One thing, you know, I, I would also, you know, speak on is the, the fact that every, you know, a large percentage of coups that, you know, take place always have about the same excuse and the same reason, you know, that they're trying to clean up the system, there's so much corruption going on, there's so much mismanagement of government going on, and they take over government, and in many, many, you know, occasions, you know, do about the same thing, or even perform worse than, um, you know, the government that they ousted, you know, and, and you, know, um, you know, made those claims against. Um, in 1985, you know, it was about the same thing that Ibrahim Babangida, you know, claimed when he eventually took over government. I was gonna mention about a guy called uh, General Bami Dili, who um, was given information about the coup. He mentioned it to Major General Muhammad Buhari back then, and Buhari had him arrested. Um, I mean, he, 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 apologies, he had word that there was gonna be a coup against Shehu Shagari, told Buhari, Buhari had him arrested, locked up for two weeks until the coup was done, and everything and then was settled. Him out. <laughs> and then, when he heard about the next coup in 85, he kept quiet because of his experience from the previous one, and then he eventually was executed for it, for not speaking. Wow. <laughs> in 2010, there is a sad one. New Year's Eve bombing in Abuja. The official figure of the dead was at the time four. Um, the report then is that it went off what we know locally as Mami Market um, in a police barrack in Abuja on uh, Christmas, um, on New Year's Eve. Four people, that was the official figure, even though it's disputed, um, including a pregnant woman, was killed on this day. Uh, 26 others were arrested. These figures I'm giving to you were from the then uh, Defence Minister, Adeto Kumbo Kayode. Uh, all of the dead were civilians, as well as those that were injured. Um, like I said, there remain an argument about the actual number of people that died. The attack was the second in Abuja in three months and was the first a, near a barrack in the country since the return to democracy in 1999. Uh, a similar attack in Jos. Just on Christmas Eve, three bombs exploded um, in that area. Uh, for me, uh, something I would like to also highlight today on uh, today in history for uh, the bomb blast that uh, took lives while others were preparing to pass over to uh, the year 2020, uh, 2011. There's a phrase in the reportage from, uh, I think, a foreign media that I'd like to highlight. It said, Death toll remains contentious in Nigeria as politicians often inflate or shrink tolls to suit their aspiration. And of that quote, it, 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 it still happens today, still unfortunately. Happens today. Um, the lives. figures of um, people that die or that are harmed um, is used to play politics. And th th it brings again the question of the value of human lives in this country. And again, wraps it to the earlier comment about uh, the coup and the promise from the then military head of state, who is now a president, that he will respect human rights. We've known that there are checkered um, um, aspects to his um, ar alleged response to uh, human rights in this country. We know that people have been incarcerated, even though they committed crimes, but they have, he has flouted several court orders. Um, our military is unhappy when they are called out on issues. So many things don't seem right. So I, I think uh, the one thing I'd like to advocate today on Today in History is that we should not play politics with the figure of those who have died. There are loved ones, there are people who cared for this human being that would like to at least acknowledge yes. that he lived in this earth, the, on this earth rather, than just dismiss them um, without care for those 
who they loved. The most recent one, um, of course, is uh, Garbache, who claimed it was just 10 people who were abducted in uh, Kankara. Uh, if you remember, uh, he eventually then had to apologize and say that, you know, it was the information that he had back then. But it's very similar to what you're saying. You know, you, there is a, an incident, you know, you have to reduce the figures or inflate the figures to suit your narrative or to suit, you know, whatever political side that you're on. Another thing that I would mention is the 1983 experience to 85 and 2015 to now have about the, you know, very similar um, patterns. It is a hard and fast rule to try and change the country. War against indiscipline, you know, was about the same, you know, process. Oh, we need, you know, these things done. So, yes, let's bring these decrees, decree this, decree that, all you of them. Don't stay on the queue. Hammer, whoop, whoop, you, know, whoop. you know, cane, <laughs> everything. You force everybody in line. And, you know, I think I felt, you know, that by now, you know, the government or, you know, the people around, you know, the, the president today would have realized that. You don't change a country that way. You don't force a country you know, you know, to change. You don't use decrees and ordering the CBN to not release money. And the change the begins with you. We wrap it up for today in history on that note. And we go on a short breather. You could go grab a cup of tea or a glass of water. When we come back, we'll be talking about the economy. Just doesn't seem like there is some light at the end of the tunnel. But we will be looking more at solutions um, other than the problems. Stay with us.